this EQS, Mercedes' most opulent EV, the Stuttgart brand has tried to redefine what the luxury limo of the future will look like. It goes further on a single charge than any electric vehicle has before and claims to be the most aerodynamic production road car yet made. The cabin is suitably futuristic, the drivetrains are potent, the technology is impressive and of course the prices are high. Everything you'd expect really from a car that equally might be everything you wouldn't expect a large luxury boardroom conveyance to be. With this EQS, we arrive in what Mercedes describes as a defining moment for the brand. The world's oldest car maker has delivered us a continual stream of EVs over the last few years, but this is the first one with a dedicated full battery platform, its first purpose-built electric vehicle. And it's a showcase for all the EV technology that the company has in store for us. One day, not too far away, the successor to this car will replace the S-Class as the Mercedes flagship design, but not yet. For now, it sells alongside the seventh generation version of that model, offering us a tantalizing glimpse of what the luxury limo of the future will be like. It looks nothing like an S-Class, and that is appropriate because more than 40 new automotive inventions set it apart, over half of them copyrighted to Mercedes. Such are the advantages of designing an era-defining large luxury saloon from a completely clean sheet of paper. On the bespoke chassis here sits battery and motor technology which set fresh sector standards for performance and range uh, with integration of next generation driving aid technology and packaging which promises to take interior luxury to the next level. Now, all of this is significant, even if you can't afford the six-figure sum that's necessary for ownership of one of these. Now, that's partly because nearly all of the tech is shared with the only slightly smaller executive sector EQE, along with separate EQS and EQE SUVs, but mainly because much of it will feature in the more affordable, mid- and compact-sized, bespoke-designed MMA platformed electric vehicles that Mercedes will shortly bring us. A significant signpost then along the route to the brand's self-imposed E-Day in 2030 when it says that more than half the cars it sells will feature some form of plug-in electric drive. Launched in late 2020 and put on sale here a year later, the EQS does indeed, on paper at least, reset the standard for what a boardroom level large luxury limo can be with awesome performance and a jaw-dropping cabin. But is it a car for the future or for the here and now? You'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test to find that out. Time to get a real feel for what Mercedes can do when it designs an EV completely from scratch. Press the starter button between the seats here and there's a subtle chime as the screens ahead of you light up. Uh, the instrument display features twin virtual dials with white needles. Mercedes sees no need to do away with the handbrake switch on a car of this kind and it's also retained the usual column mounted gear changing stalk too. Uh, time to click that into drive and see what we have here. Can an electric car also be a limousine? Well, not at the moment over very long distances, which is limiting at best for captains of industry who need an intercontinental commute. Uh, Mercedes knows that one day, uh, quite soon as well, the big petrol V8s and V12s which characterise this segment will be consigned to uh, museums and the talking instead will be of battery rather than of capacity size. So the EQS, uh, from launch at least, assumes bragging rights in that respect, with the largest battery yet fitted to a European EV, one of 107.8 kilowatt hours in usable size and capable of up to 453 miles from a single charge in the standard 450 plus model that we're trying here. Uh, large EVs that can take bigger batteries will of course always deliver longer range figures than smaller ones, but that is nonetheless an impressive showing. 
prodigious horsepower, or at least prodigious use of it, uh, will quickly drain that kind of range capability, and the EQS has that too. 333 horsepower in this standard 450 plus form, and 658 horsepower if you opt for the alternative Mercedes AMG 53 4Matic Plus version, which goes up to 358 miles between charges. Despite the two and a half ton curb weight, uh, those power outputs are enough to see this standard model wafting you to 62 miles an hour in just 6.2 seconds. Uh, I think just 3.8 seconds for the 53 series AMG variant. Usually in high performance EVs, those kinds of speeds are accompanied by so much wind and tire roar that you forget you're in an electric vehicle at all. Not here though, uh, virtually all of that has been uh, ruthlessly eradicated at source, which makes the tsunami style sense of speed which accompanies every flex of your right foot seem even more otherworldly. If that's not otherworldly enough for you and you have a standard model above base trim, then there is a selectable pair of so-called sound experiences which play through the Burmester sound system. Uh, they rise and fall with throttle use. Uh, Vivid Flux gives your EQS the feel of a spacecraft approaching warp speed. Silver Waves is equally odd. Uh, Mercedes says it's a clean and sensuous sound, but it's actually more the sort of thing that you might hear during a mass at a spa. If, like us, it uh, all rather makes you despair about the future of EV technology, then you might be slightly more comfortable with the so-called soundscapes that you get with the AMG 53 model, which are a fraction closer to automotive reality, balanced, sport and powerful. All of this is accompanied by active ambient lighting surrounding the top of the dash, uh, which glows red when you accelerate hard and blue when you don't proof that the engineers behind this car haven't wasted all their time with this sort of nonsense uh, comes in two forms. Firstly, with the clever energy recuperation system, which is manually selectable via these steering wheel paddles in three stages. D plus, uh, D and D minus. The last of these allows what EV folk like to call one pedal driving. In other words, uh, brake energy recuperation, which is so dramatic that you hardly ever have to use the brake pedal. Most of the time though, you'll be content to leave this car in its other regeneration mode, D-Auto, in which setting it'll make all its own decisions on recuperation uh, based on camera, sensor, radar and GPS data. The other piece of engineering which has really impressed us here is the exquisite quality of ride from the Airmatic Plus suspension. Now you might expect uh, that given that the S-Class has long offered the finest damping in the segment, but it would still have been easy for the EQS development team to mess that up given this EV limo weighs around half a tonne more. Uh, in the end the engineers opted for an air chamber, four link uh, front suspension setup with a uh, multi link rear arrangement, all of which is closely related to the system which is used in the S-Class and as with that car, the Airmatic Plus parameters are adjusted depending on the dynamic select driving mode system you select. Uh, choose from eco, comfort, sport and individual. Uh, the ride height falls at above 74 miles an hour which improves aerodynamic efficiency and also ups the driving range. Predictive camera-based uh, suspension tech is missing here, but this car nonetheless wafts over speed humps and tarmac tears as if they weren't there. It's uh, actually probably our favourite thing about it. Does that pillowy ride mean a dynamic downside through the turns though? Well, that depends on what your expectations are. In the rather unlikely event that you want to throw this car around, uh, you would choose the AMG 53 version, of course, but even then there's not very much fun to be had uh, in driving this car as if you'd stolen it. It's not particularly that body control is wayward. On the contrary, if you start trying to really push through the corners, you'll find that this Mercedes is pretty well tied down for a saloon of this size. And helped by the low center of gravity, turning traction is excellent. Uh, that's despite the prodigious levels of torque straining for release uh, below your right foot. But there's precious little real enjoyment to be had from the experience, despite the speed at which it's being completed. 
Now speed, as we've already suggested, is certainly not lacking in the AMG 53 version. Uh, with that model, you can even get an optional AMG performance package, which further boosts the power output by 93 horsepower to 751 HP and adds a race start launch control function. But we can't really see why you'd want to. There's already 950 newton meters of torque on offer from the 53 variant in ordinary form. That's nearly double the 568 newton meter figure that you'll get in this 450 plus variant along with a maximum speed of 155 miles an hour that's raised from 137 in this EQS 450 plus. In any case, in some ways, the faster you go in this car, uh, the less pleasantly memorable uh, the experience it delivers. Uh, an EQS, like an S-Class, is at its best when it's ambling about. It's variable height suspension, rising and falling with speed. Uh, it's easy but surprisingly feels some steering, uh, reading the road, and it's predictive navigation, anticipating turns and junctions, so the car eases through suburbia with magical elegance. Rear axle steering is standard, which above base trim sees the rear wheels turning by up to 10 degrees compared to those at the front. It's up to 9 degrees with the AMG 53 version. Uh, they turn in the same direction as those at the front to help stability at high speeds and in the opposite direction to aid maneuverability at parking speeds. It works too. The EQS boasts a compact hatch-like turning circle of 10.9 meters with the usual setup, which is extraordinary for a 5.21 meter long limousine. So where does all that leave us? Well, just as the Mercedes S-Class was in many ways the original boardroom large luxury saloon, uh, so in future years the EQS will be seen as being the first car to fill that role for EVs. You might think that the looks lack the traditional gravitas that a car in this class is expected to have, but that's because nothing, uh, not even the crucial issue in this class of pavement presence, has been allowed to get in the way of the relentless engineering drive towards efficiency which characterises this car. The luxury limo of the future must have less environmental impact on its surroundings than the super mini of the past, and for that to happen, a big saloon of this kind must change radically. The EQS epitomizes the need for that. It's different because, going forward, cars of this kind will have to be. And just as significantly, it's the first European brand EV to properly trump Tesla when it comes to driving range. Of course, as a top-level executive, you may not be quite ready for this level of radical change. And if so, no problem. Uh, that's why Mercedes still retains the S-Class. But if you are, in this car, the future awaits. This is a new era in Mercedes luxury design, so perhaps it's appropriate that there's nothing of the S-Class in the look of this EQS. For a start, like the next model down in the EQ lineup, the EQE, this is a five-door hatch, although it also comes as an SUV. Either way, the visual drama on show here is very different from anything Mercedes customers in this sector will have previously been used to. And it's also somewhat different to the rather more striking Vision EQS concept car that was shown at the 2019 Frankfurt Motor Show. And that was supposed to have been the inspiration for this model. From the side, the standard three-box profile of model in this category is completely absent, sacrificed in Mercedes' obsession to create the world's most aerodynamic motor car, achieved with a drag factor of just 0.20 cd. Uh, this so-called one-bow roofline is stretched over a coupe-like silhouette, featuring short overhangs and a cab forward design with rate-back A-pillars. It would have been difficult to create a long wheelbase version of a shape like this, and Mercedes hasn't tried. It isn't really necessary either because, as we'll see, uh, the all-new EVA platform has freed up lots of extra rear seat space. And in any case, the EQS at 5,216 mils long is already 37 millimeters longer and 9 mils taller than the standard S-Class. There's lots of exquisite detail here too, like the flush door handles, the high arched belt line, and aerodynamic surfacing for the wing mirrors and the large wheels. Uh, these rims are offered at sizes between 20 and 22 inches. We've got the 22 inch five spoke black painted rims here. 
The front is arguably the most visually appealing element of this design with plenty of overtaking presence, particularly in the case of the Mercedes AMG 53 version, which gains the Afalta back tuning division's characteristic Pan America grille panel. Even the standard model's uh, black grille plate looks smart though, particularly on versions that get the three dimensional star pattern. This panel topped by the distinctive running light strip, which delineates the brand's EQ designs. Uh, flanking this appendage are LED headlamps, uh, which feature three distinctive light dots. Above base trim, these lamps feature clever digital light technology, which projects driving images onto the road ahead. Uh, twin veined corner cutouts surround the lower intake, and the switch to seamless panel design is evidenced by this unusual overlapping bonnet, which does away with the uh, traditional separation between bonnet and wings. This bonnet, by the way, can only be opened by a specialist workshop for maintenance, uh, such as replacing the interior air filter. If you're wondering how you top up the wiper fluid, well, there's uh, a service flap integrated into the left front wing here. The rear feels least limo-like, uh, but Mercedes has tried to give the flush tailgate some visual gravitas with raked back glass and a sharp spoiler lip. Uh, the jewellery below is made up of the usual EQ model full width light strip, uh, which tries to disguise the fact that this car is 28 millimetres narrower than the S-Class. Uh, flanking this strip are distinctive tail lights incorporating curved and illuminated 3D helix shaping. As usual, of course, what's more important is what you can't see. The rigid aluminium EVA electric vehicle architecture platform, which undergirds this car, the first bespoke EV chassis that Mercedes has ever designed. There's lots then to the exterior design, but the futuristic sense of style chosen here is undeniably divisive. Mercedes can afford for it to be so because eco-minded Bordeaux Boyers always have the alternative of the more traditional looking S580e plug-in hybrid. That unfettered approach extends to an even greater extent inside, so let's take a look. Uh, as you approach the driver's door, the flush fitting handle springs out as you unlock the car. Unfortunately, when you grasp it, the whole thing flexes rather cheaply and the rather limp sound of plastic catching plastic isn't quite the welcoming handshake that you might have been hoping for from a six-figure premium luxury limo. In other markets where this Mercedes is sold, you'd notice this much less if your EQS had been fitted with the automatic comfort door system, which at the time of this test, the brand wasn't offering here. Now with this, when you're within 1.5 meters of the car, it provides a chauffeur service and opens the car door for you. Such expressions of technology are merely a prelude to what will almost certainly be the most futuristic cabin you'll yet have experienced. That's assuming the interior has been specified like this with what Mercedes calls its MBUX hyperscreen draped like a wave over the entire width of the dashboard. Uh, unless you have chosen a top Mercedes AMG 53 trim level or paid £8,000 more, it won't be, which would be less than ideal because the fascia has clearly been primarily designed for this three-dimensional structure and uh, not for the conventional S-Class derived 12.8 and 12.3 inch centre and instrument screens, which you'd get if you do without it. So dig deep and enjoy a feature that's unique in automotive construction to date. Uh, it's described by its maker as a digital work of art and a futuristic luxurious sculpture. Even the system stats are mind-boggling. Eight CPU cores, 24 gigabytes of RAM and 46.4 gigabytes per second of RAM memory bandwidth. The hyperscreen name is uh, misleading because this is actually a layout of three high-definition OLED monitors which merge into one another to create a screen band over 55.5 inches wide. Uh, the primary interface is this 17.7 inch central display which then branches off to separate 12.3 inch displays each side for driver and passenger. If you thought a Tesla was avant-garde, well, try one of these. 
Before we delve deeper into screen tech, let's take a moment to consider what we have here. Uh, without the need to incorporate the huge central transmission tunnel a combustion model has to have, and with the S-Class on hand to satisfy traditionalists, uh, Mercedes had the opportunity here to do something radical and completely change the front of cabin experience in a car of this kind. For all the hyperscreen hype, uh, that's not what we've got. Now, true, the central tunnel doesn't quite meet the centre stack, but it's still substantial. And there's nothing here to suggest the kind of uh, fundamental switch in design direction that this car's advanced EVA architecture ought to have made possible. Despite all the screens, there isn't even much of a move away from old-fashioned little switches and buttons. Uh, there's a bank of them on the tunnel between the seats, and this uh, three-spoke wheel here is absolutely festooned with the things. That's not to say there aren't some lovely touches here. Uh, the cabin design concept for this EQS was what Mercedes calls hyper-analog, uh, the contrast between high-precision mechanics and the digital glass display world. So it is that the hyperscreen's glass wave is juxtaposed with intricately formed vents, a slim band of them spanning the entire width of the dash at the top, and turbine-style outer ones bookending the fascia at either end. From those corners, the dash flows almost seamlessly into each door card, where a surface-mounted modular body floats like a sideboard in front of the main panel. The materials, too, are clearly very carefully selected, as brands like Audi and Tesla have found getting wood, leather and metal to blend together with cohesive elegance is difficult to do, but here the trimming strips kiss together and look exquisite. Real wood, for example, on the wide top of this storage area on this lower console, uh, this twin-stitched dash top is lovely, the rose gold finishing on the vents is smart, and after dark, circular contrast lighting, which can also be used actively to designate phone, media or safety functions, completes the floating avant-garde aesthetic. Seating comfort, of course, is vital for VIP travel. Here there are sports seats with stitched Napa leather surfaces designed in a layering theme so that they give the impression of draped on leather blankets. Uh, in their most elaborate form, the superbly supportive chairs get these little extra head poofs which uh, hang down from the head restraints like hibernating nocturnal bats. And on top variants like this one, each powered front seat features heating, cooling and 10 different massage programs. Meanwhile, no fewer than 17 step motors control the the temperature and air distribution of the thermotronic climate system, which uses solar sensors to climatically adjust itself. These are just a few of the 350 sensors built into this car to record everything from lighting conditions and temperatures to seat occupancy, the driver's blink of an eye or the passenger's speech. Uh, these also enable this expression of modern luxury to be anticipatory, which is why, for example, with a top variant like this one, there's a clever MBUX interior assist setup that works by movement and gesture. For example, reach across to the passenger side of the cabin in the dark and the car will automatically illuminate the area that you're looking at. All very impressive, but the defining element of the front part of this cabin, as we said at the beginning, is its screen tech. Um, we haven't even yet mentioned all of it. If you avoid the two base trim levels, you'll get a head-up display with an enormous screen diagonal. If you specify this hyper screen, though, it's the three interconnected monitors which comprise its layout that will most capture your attention. Uh, once you manage to activate them, uh, in order to access the system at all, you'll have to have uh, previously set up a user profile, and that takes your fingerprint, it measures your voice and height, and builds facial recognition as part of a process which does feel like you're being interrogated by the FBI. Prior to then actually driving this car, if the facial recognition doesn't work, you either have to put your finger on the scanner or punch in a four-digit code. Now, we're not absolutely convinced that this level of encryption is really needed to protect your choice of seat angle, uh, temperature settings, and radio station preferences. Uh, as elsewhere in places with this car, it does seem like technology is merely being implemented because it can be. 
but what a level of technology. And that's something you only fully appreciate once you begin to get familiar with how the hyperscreen setup works. It's both the mastermind and the nervous system of the car. And as we explained earlier on, it's based around the three main areas. The driver display you view through the wheel, the central information display, and this additional passenger display. The driver's display is customizable and it can show driving information functions, driving modes, speed, range, uh, driver assist features and a lot more, all of which can be controlled from the steering wheel touch control buttons. Uh, because the hyperscreen is a curved piece of glass, you can't here have the kind of instrument display with 3D depth that you'll get in the S-Class, but you can customize the layout to fit your personal preference. For example, go full screen with navigation and driver assist features. In all, there are five selectable layouts, classic, sport, navigation, assistance, and understated. Plus, you can select various data options to appear in the center of the screen, like an eco display, audio preferences, or a reduced nav map. As you expect, this large touchscreen in the middle of the cabin uh, contains all the vehicle's infotainment functions, so let's get to grips with that. Uh, climate control functions are located at the bottom of the display. Uh, at the top left corner, you've got this little EQ pop-out, which has all the charging-related features that we'll cover for you in our cost of ownership section. Uh, next, try swiping down from the middle at the top or tapping this car button between the seats. Uh, that gets you access to favourite and frequently accessed functions, so things like the lane keeping assistant or the head-up display. Uh, finally, if you tap the home button down at the base of the screen here, it pops up the main MBUX feature menu that you might be familiar with from lesser Mercedes models uh, for things like your apps, your terrestrial and satellite radio and media selections, and the comfort menu too, where you can customize things like the seat settings and the active multi-zone ambient lighting. Plus, from here, you have another way of accessing the EQ charging menu we mentioned earlier. The really clever bit, though, is the so-called zero layer here above the bottom edge of the central display screen, which, alongside your audio source and phone settings, offers a selection of artificial intelligence-based suggestions for things that the vehicle thinks that you might want to do uh, based on time of day, map location, and previous preferences. So if you regularly leave the gym at 5 p.m. and select a massage for the drive home, it'll suggest that when you get in the car at that time. If, when you get into the car in the morning, uh, you usually select a particular radio station or dial into a conference call, then it'll suggest that too. The hyperscreen single piece of glass continues on to the passenger side display. You might think this to be a bit of a gimmick, and it is uh, in some other cars, but here we think it's genuinely useful, and it could even be classified as a safety function. With no one in the passenger seat, the screen here just shows a clock, but as soon as the car senses that there is someone sitting alongside the driver, uh, it'll offer up a button to power up this screen, after which you log in in the usual way. Uh, once you have, you've effectively got a second MBUX system right here. Everything you would normally see on the main uh, centre display screen in, say, an S-Class or an E-Class is here in front of you, like navigation, phone, audio sources and charging functions. Uh, that's not only useful for comfort, so the passenger can use uh, Bluetooth-enabled headphones to listen to their own music, for example, independent of the rest of the car, or they can select their own seat settings. More importantly, though, um, it enables the passenger to fully act as a co-pilot for the driver, so the driver can ask whoever is sitting alongside them to search out destinations, restaurants, charging stations, radio preferences, or media selections, uh, which, when located by the passenger, can then be easily transferred over to the main central display screen and activated. In all this, the driver never has to take his or her concentration away from the road or from the surrounding traffic. 
Of course, you don't need to go tapping and swiping screens if you don't want to. The car has a very intuitive MBUX voice control system that can find most things for you and activate them without you having to search through the monitor menus. You might also use the voice control for the MBUX smart home function. Now that can link into home or work systems and it allows you to remotely activate lights or electrical devices. Uh, the voice system can also anticipate your needs. A simple statement like I'm feeling stressed, for example, activates an energizing comfort feature which begins a soothing seat massage while calming the cabin with relaxing lights and music. In all, seven different energizing comfort themes are available. Uh, they're created with acclaimed nature acoustician Gordon Hempton. Uh, these include not only whimsical options like Forest Glade and Summer Rain, but also a training option that helps you to work out at the wheel and another which allows you to take a power nap while the car's charging. What else might you need to know? Well, there's the usual Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, of course. And as long as you avoid bass trim, you'll get a 15-speaker, 710-watt Burmester sound system with these intricately fashioned speakers. As with the current S-Class, we do have our reservations about build quality, given the lottery-level sums that are being asked for ownership here. Uh, frameless doors never shut with much of a thunk, but these ones feel particularly hollow. The outer silver vents are made of cheap silver plastic, and they feel like it. The stitched upper part of the dashboard moves up and down when you push it, and the floating door pull panel uh, doesn't feel particularly strongly attached to the door. Uh, what else? Uh, well, the driving position, it's not quite as comfortable as the one in the S-Class because you're sitting closer to the floor and that means that your knees are higher and your legs get uh, rather less support from the seat base. Plus, despite Mercedes' best efforts, the uh, hyper screen attracts reflections and the swoopy roof line means that there are some rear visibility issues out of that uh, narrow rear screen. Although these are mitigated to some extent, of course, by all round sensors, a rear view camera and a blind spot monitoring system. At least there's plenty of storage space. Uh, this lovely wood panel on the lower center stack slides back to reveal a cubby, a wireless charging mat, twin USB-C ports and adjustable twin cup holders. Uh, beneath this compartment is a further shallow fuller level storage space which has two further USB-C ports and an elasticated strap to prevent uh, items sloping into the footwells. There's a big glove box, uh, that's where the air balance cabin scent dispenser can sit and you get decently sized door bins and a twin lidded compartment here between the seats with two more USB-C ports. Uh, Mercedes has forgotten an overhead sunglasses compartment, but there are the usual ticket clips in the sun visors. Time to take a seat in the back. Now, we mentioned earlier that the long wheelbase version of this body shape wasn't really needed due to space freed up by the EVA architecture, so time to put that to the test. Inside, of course, it's very nice indeed, and there's more legroom than you could possibly need. Uh, most EQS models have this conventional three-person rear bench format, but with the top-spec version of the standard model or with the AMG 53 series version, you can pay extra for an optional rear luxury lounge package, which gets you two individual power adjustable rear seats with a massaging function, neck warmers and luxury head restraints. Plus there's a comfort rear center armrest with integrated tablet screen, a wireless phone charger and extra USB ports. Uh, there is an armrest with this standard rear cabin layout of course, but it's a much uh, simpler thing. You press once for a pen tray and then press again for two extended cup holders. You do get an area feel with this standard layout, uh, helped by this particularly low central transmission tunnel. Uh, something that on all EQS variants is helped by this standard two-panel panoramic glass roof. It's not quite as comfortable as it is in the back of an S-Class because the seat backs are slightly more upright, but there are some really smart touches. The classy vents above the climate controls, the pair of narrow overhead lights that you're favored with on both sides of the cabin, and also exquisite wood trimming on the doors here. 
a pair of USB-C ports uh, are concealed behind this lower center panel and there are coat hooks on the B pillars and big door pockets. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. It does feel odd raising a hatch on a limo, but of course, having a tailgate does make this Mercedes that bit more practical. The 610 litre luggage area revealed looks vast, and it is, it's nearly double the size of the 325 litre space you get in the kind of Mercedes S580e plug-in hybrid that potential customers might also be considering. This cargo bay though is also rather shallow, which is why it's 40 litres smaller than the boot of a Tesla Model S, and it's accessed by uh, a high loading lip that's impractically coated with silver trim, which will quickly scratch. Uh, this light carpeting of the test car is obviously not particularly practical either. A neat compartment in the floor has plenty of space for charging leads, but as usual on an EV, there's no room for any kind of space saver spare wheel. Bag hooks are provided on both cargo sidewalls. There are four tie down points on the floor and you'll get this netted stowage area on the left. The rear seat back has a flexible 40-20-40 split, so you can push long items like skis in between a couple of rear seated passengers. And when everything is flat, there's 1,770 litres of space to play with. You're gonna to have to think in terms of a price starting point of just over a hundred thousand pounds for EQS ownership. That's for the base rear driven EQS 450 plus AMG line model, which offers 333 horsepower and from launch was a starting point in the EQS hierarchy. If you can afford more, this variant comes in a choice of four further trim levels, AMG line premium, AMG line premium plus, luxury and this top exclusive luxury version which at the time of this test in summer 2022 was priced at just over 116,000 pounds. Other markets get a lesser 288 horsepower EQS 350 variant that we might well see here along with a more powerful EQS 500 model offering 443 horsepower and an EQS 580 variant with 516 horsepower. Those last two derivatives are offered only with 4MATIC four-wheel drive. At the time of this test, uh, the only way of getting the 4MATIC drive system with the conventional EQS body style in the UK was to opt for the alternative version of this car that from launch we did get, the Mercedes-AMG EQS 53. Now, predictably, given that power for that performance variant rises right up to at least 658 horsepower, that's an even costlier confection, priced from just over 157,000 pounds at the time of this test in either night edition or touring forms. Your other alternative is to opt for the EQS SUV body style, which had just been announced at the time of making this film with all the same drivetrain options that you can have with this uh, conventional model. Here though, our focus is on the conventional EQS body shape. It rolls out of the same Zindelfingen factory complex as its close cousin, the Mercedes S-Class, uh, which of course is a saloon. The EQS is a five-door hatch. And that's a car that costs much the same as an EQS, uh, if, as would be most relevant, your point of comparison is with the S580e plug-in hybrid S-Class model. At the time of filming, that PHEV S-Class, only available with the longer wheelbase body shape that this EQS can't have, was priced from around £109,000 upwards, although you can have an entry-level S-Class with conventional diesel power for over £25,000 less than that. Uh, other PHEV limos in this class that might figure in an EQS customer's deliberations include the Audi A8 60 TFSI E, the Porsche Panamera E Hybrid and the BMW 745e. All three are significantly cheaper than an S580e, but they won't take you anything like as far on battery power. Nor will a much pricier Bentley Flying Spur plug-in hybrid. A typical EQS customer, though, isn't usually going to be considering this car against limo-level PHEVs. Instead, they'll probably be considering 
full electric alternatives from an eclectic range of brands. Uh, many of the reports you'll read will make comparisons with versions of the Porsche Taycan, the Audi e-tron GT and the Tesla Model S, uh, maybe even Neo ET7, all of which in the most expensive forms sell in the same price bracket. But Mercedes has rather higher benchmarks in mind than that, some of which, as we made this film, we had yet to see. Uh, one of them had just been announced uh, at the time of this test. That's BMW's i7, with two more, the Lucid Air and the Audi Landjet, not too far off. It's an exclusive club that will grow exponentially over the next few years, but uh, arguably there will be nothing in it quite like an EQS. If you think so too, then you're gonna to need to know exactly how generous Mercedes has been with the standard specification here. So let's take a look at that now. Let's start with base AMG line trim, which comes with 20 inch AMG five spoke tantalite gray alloy wheels, aromatic air suspension, uh, LED headlamps with high beam assist and AMG exterior styling with rear privacy glass. There's also a panoramic glass roof, a keyless go keyless entry, an easy pack powered tailgate, heat insulating infrared reflecting laminated glass, uh, power folding mirrors, red brake calipers, uh, projection puddle lights and metallic paint. Plus, you'll get an active parking assist parking package, which steers you into spaces, has all round sensors and features a reversing camera. Uh, talking of cameras, the Mercedes driving assistance package of camera safety and drive assistance features, uh, that comes included too. Uh, we're going to brief you on that shortly. All EQS variants also get the brand's Dynamic Select driving mode system uh, with eco, comfort and sport settings. Plus there's an individual program too and five brake energy recuperation setting levels. Uh, the base 4.5 degree rear axle steering system also comes included at this level, giving a tighter turning circle and also greater cornering stability. Inside the two big screens that characterize the seventh generation S-Class are present and correct, uh, a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster display and a 12.8 inch OLED touchscreen central media display. The latter incorporates augmented reality navigation and a fingerprint scanner. Uh, that central monitor also includes hard disk navigation with EV orientated EQ navigation services and three years of live traffic information. Plus there's wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, six USB-C points and a Mercedes DAB sound system. There's luxury cabin trim, of course, with leather upholstery and a choice of two colors, either black and space gray, or Neva gray and Balao brown. Uh, you also get a black fabric roof liner, uh, HEPA air filter, and anthracite line structure lime wood trim. And you'll press stainless steel AMG pedals and grip a multifunction AMG performance sports steering wheel trimmed in Napa leather. You'll want all the usual executive niceties, of course, power operated, heated front AMG sports seats with memory settings, plus wireless smartphone integration with a wireless charging mat, uh, Thermotronic four zone automatic climate system with rear seat controls, uh, ambient lighting with 10 color schemes and 64 colors, heated rear seats and illuminated door sills. And as you'd expect, the kit tally includes an auto dimming rear view mirror, uh, also black velour floor mats, special magic vision wipers with jets on the arms, a first aid kit and a split folding rear seat. Uh, there's also an air quality package with a high efficiency particulate air filter, which eliminates 99.65% of particles of all sizes as well as dealing with pollen, nitrogen dioxides, sulfur dioxides and certain viruses. The air quality package also incorporates around 600 grams of activated charcoal to neutralize odors. So that's covered everything you get with standard AMG line trim, but you probably haven't got this far in life to stick with an EQS in base trim. So 
just how much more kit is delivered if you spend more and you venture further up the range. Well, we'd counsel you to stretch at least as far as AMG line premium spec because you'll need to stretch to that level in the range to get a few of this car's key tech and luxury features, not least the optional dashboard hyperscreen, which all your friends will want to see. More on that in a moment. As for the extra features with AMG Line Premium Spec, well, first up is the 15-speaker, 710-watt Burmester surround sound system, without which you won't get to experience the two sound experience settings, which simulate motion sounds as you press the throttle. There's silver waves and vivid flux. Also key to the EQS experience and fitted from AMG Line premium level upwards are the digital light headlights. Uh, they are recognisable by their concave lenses and by their blue Mercedes lettering. Uh, with this tech, each lamp has a light module with three extremely powerful LEDs whose light is refracted and directed by 1.3 million micro mirrors. The digital light system projects not only light onto the road ahead, but also auxiliary markings to warn you of things like roadworks, uh, pedestrians, lane changes or traffic lights. And they also take into account GPS topography, so when you drive over a sharp crest, the headlight won't be shining up at the sky. The AMG line premium model gets larger 21-inch black AMG wheels and a 360-degree surround view camera system. Also, from this level in the range upwards, you'll notice the rear axle steering package much more because it turns the rear wheel to a much greater extent, up to 10 degrees, and that enables a small hatchback-like turning circle of just 10.9 metres. And at this level in the lineup, uh, the driving assistance package that we mentioned earlier on gets upgraded to driving assistance package plus status with extra features. Next up is mid-level AMG Line Premium Plus Spec, identifiable by 21-inch wheels of a classier multi-spoke design. Plus, from this level upwards, you get acoustic privacy glass and the black front panel gets a three-dimensional Mercedes star pattern, referencing the original star of the Daimler Motorengel Selschaft Company, which was registered as a trademark in 1911. AMG Line Premium Plus trim entitles you to three more of this car's most notably technological features. Uh, there's the MBUX interior assist system, which uses a camera and the overhead control panel and learning algorithms to anticipate and recognize your wishes. So if you're looking for something in the front passenger seat in the dark, it will automatically switch the light on. And uh, natural hand movements, uh, they are recognized also. So for example, you can open the sliding roof touch free. Uh, AMG Line Premium Plus spec also gives you a head-up display upon which is projected the graphics of that augmented reality navigation system. And you additionally get a three-year subscription, and that's to the deeply cool remote parking package. Now, that will allow you to stand outside your car and park it in tighter spaces using a smartphone. Those then are the three AMG line themed trim levels, but not all EQS customers will want the sportier look you get with those. And for them, Mercedes has added two extra luxury spec models at the top of the range, starting with luxury spec, which gets the biggest 22 inch wheel size and ornamental rose gold colored key and heat for the windscreen and the steering wheel. Uh, the interior features uh, what the brand calls its electric art interior finish, which gets you ship's deck open and poor walnut wood cabin inlays and seats with pillow-like comfort headrests and upholstery trimmed in a combination of man-made leather and uh, suede-like microcut microfiber. Uh, now with both the luxury spec models, you can have the upholstery in a choice of three color combinations, uh, black and space gray, macchiato beige and space gray, or black and balao brown. 
Finally, if nothing but the plushest spec will do in a standard EQS, you'll opt for the exclusive luxury version we're trying here. Now, the differences over luxury spec aren't great. Uh, that Mercedes pattern for the front grille plate we mentioned earlier, and inside multi-contour seats with an energizing massage function. Uh, what will probably be most convincing, though, in uh, persuading customers to choose exclusive luxury spec is the fact that this is the only non-AMG EQS trim level that allows you to specify the desirable rear luxury lounge package. So more on that in a moment. That only leaves the separate sportier Mercedes-AMG 53 formatic plus models. A bit disappointingly, you have to stretch to that to get the cabin hyperscreen feature we mentioned earlier fitted as standard, uh, which you'd want given the lottery level pricing of the 53 series variants. As we mentioned earlier, there are two, both priced identically. You have a choice of sporty night edition or the more luxury orientated touring forms. Uh, visual differentiation is based on the fact that night edition gets black exterior detailing and 21 inch cross spoke AMG wheels with red brake calipers while the Touring gets chrome exterior detailing and 22 inch multi-spoke AMG wheels with silver brake calipers. Inside, the Knight Edition has anthracite line structure limewood trim inlays and Alcantara-like microcut combining with the leather on the AMG performance steering wheel, while the Touring has ship's deck open pore walnut wood inlays and just Napa leather on the wheel. Uh, with both the 53 series models, you can have the AMG Napa leather upholstery in a choice of uh, three color combinations. There's black and space gray, there's Neva gray and Balao brown, or black and Balao brown. Uh, both 53 series AMG variants get most of the features that you'd find on a plusher version of the standard EQS. Uh, that includes the digital light headlamp tech, uh, plus there's a nine degree rear axle steering system. In choosing between the two 53 series variants, you might be swayed towards the Knight Edition version by the fact that this is the only one that can be ordered with uh, Mercedes optional AMG performance package, uh, which for £9,000 more increases power by over 100 horsepower to 761 HP and ups the top speed to 155 miles an hour. Of course, you get more than that for £9,000. A race start launch control system for Grand Prix style getaways, three throatier AMG drive sounds, balanced, sport and powerful, the AMG track pace app for circuit lap timing and drive analysis, extra AMG carbon fibre trim and yellow brake calipers. Whatever EQS model you decide on, standard or Mercedes AMG 53, you'd expect it to come dripping with the latest information technology. And of course, there's certainly plenty of that here. Like all the latest Mercedes designs, this one incorporates what the brand calls Car 2X communication. This is a mobile phone supported exchange of information system, uh, which will see your EQS uh, sending data on driving conditions back to a central hub, which then shares it with other the Mercedes drivers. Uh, that will mean that in a way that uh, appears almost magical, your EQS will know in advance about things like icy conditions and traffic jams. It's very clever. And of course, there's an app. There's always an app, isn't there? This one is called Mercedes Me Connect, and it does all the usual vehicle monitoring things once you've registered it, uh, like reminding you when a service is due, plus it can automatically detect and share with you uh, details on your car's wear and tear items, or perhaps the fuel level, the oil level, or the tire pressures. Plus, it can remotely lock the car if you've forgotten to, and it offers remote closing of the windows and the sunroof. In addition, the app also offers a send to car function, so you can send selected addresses via Mercedes Me to the vehicle's navigation system. Plus, as you would expect, uh, the app gives you a one-touch button for fast uh, accident and breakdown recovery, and it'll automatically alert the rescue services in the event of an accident. Uh, you can even track your EQS if it's stolen and help you to make a police report. In addition, there's a geofencing feature. Now, this will tell you if uh, the car has left a pre-agreed geographical boundary if you lend it out. And there's a speed fencing feature too that will tell you if the car is being used 
over a predetermined speed limit. Uh, also useful is the valet protect feature, which will tell you if your EQS has left a predefined radius, one kilometer, 2.5 kilometers, or five kilometers, uh, if it's being parked. And of course, the app can tell you where the vehicle is if you've forgotten where you parked it. Now, what you can't do for the time being is to use the automated valet parking feature already built into this car for AVP compatible multi-storey car parks just starting to be introduced in Germany. Now, with these, you can drive to a drop-off point at the entrance of the car park. Uh, you disembark with all your passengers and all your luggage, and then you prompt the car from your phone to go and park itself. Now, on your return, a phone prompt will summon the car obediently back to the same place. Uh, also integrated into this car for activation in the future is the MBUX smart home function via which from the car on the move you'll be able to use uh, smart activated features in your home like lights, uh, the heating system and the house alarm. So if you've rushed off without turning off all the lights it's really no problem. Uh, you might want to activate the uh, garage light in readiness for your arrival, uh, maybe heat up the hallway or ask the car if all the house windows are closed. Less pleasantly, uh, the system could also advise you if someone's trying to break in, of course. For right now, a less futuristic feature which works via the Mercedes Me Connect phone app is Urban Guard Plus, which monitors the car when it's parked and alerts you remotely if it's bumped, uh, if the alarm goes off, or worse, if someone is trying to tow it away. Uh, your phone will instantly tell you uh, how severe that parking damage is and on which part of the vehicle it occurred. Uh, Urban Guard Plus uh, can also locate this Mercedes if it's stolen, even if the thief has disabled the tracking function. Plus, parking collisions will be recorded by the car's 360-degree camera system so that uh, if you happen to return the car and find it dented, the accident can be reconstructed with time and place. Right, what about extra cost features you can add to any kind of EQS? Well, we've already mentioned the main one that customers who choose the standard EQS will want, the hyperscreen package, which, as we said earlier on, can only be had if you avoid base trim and which costs another £8,000 on the non-53 series models. This, as we explained in our design section, is a layout of three high-definition OLED monitors that merge into one another to create a screen band over 55.5 inches wide. The primary interface is a 17.7-inch central display which then branches off into two separate 12.3-inch displays each side for the driver and the passenger. Uh, augmented reality navigation is built in, as is a fingerprint scanner, which is also included with the standard screen layout. Otherwise, the biggest ticket item is the rear luxury lounge package we mentioned earlier. This is only available with this exclusive luxury trim level and with the touring version of the AMG 53 variant. This gets you power adjustable rear seats with a massaging function, neck warmers and luxury head restraints. Plus, there's also a comfort rear centre armrest with an integrated tablet screen, uh, a wireless phone charger and extra USB ports. This package also includes a rear seat version of the gesture-controlled interior assistance system we mentioned earlier on and adaptive interior lighting. As for individual options, well, there aren't too many. Uh, your dealer can sell you a four-piece velour floor mat set in a choice of three colours, plus a bespoke cool box and a set of Bluetooth headphones. Uh, bear in mind that you might have to pay extra for your chosen paint colour. Uh, the standard one is the obsidian black metallic shade that we have here, uh, but there are five other no-cost metallic colour options. If you don't like any of those, uh, then you can pay more for a more unique manufacture diamond white or hyacinth red metallic shade or an obscene amount more for a more exclusive manufacture sunlight grey magno finish. 
It's also worth pointing out that there are some features that can be ordered from the online Mercedes Me store and then added to your EQS as part of the infotainment system's over-the-air updates. Now, from launch, amongst these was an opportunity for customers of the base AMG line trim level to upgrade their car's rear axle steering system from 4.5 to 10 degrees. And above base trim, EQS customers can also add to the sound experiences which play through that Burmester sound system, rising and falling with throttle use. Uh, vivid flux and silver waves are the standard ones, and to those, you can add another one, Roaring Pulse. Now this third one is designed to replicate the noise of a traditional combustion engine, which uh, of course is a touch ironic. Over the air updates can also add various games and quizzes that you can play on the screens. Or if you have a nervous partner, you can install a beginner drive mode where the driving characteristics are more gentle. Uh, there is also an available valet mode, which is similarly limited and intended for use by service personnel such as hotel staff. Enough with all that, on to safety. Now the fact that the EQS is based on all electric architecture opened up new design possibilities for Mercedes when it uh, came to impact protection. It meant, uh, for example, that a favorable location could be chosen for the uh, installation of a battery in a crash protected area in the underbody. And uh, because there's no large engine block on board this EV, the car's behavior in a frontal crash could be modeled even better. As well as a standard crash test designed to examine the usual rigid passenger cell, special deformation zones and state-of-the-art restraint systems, the car's performance in various other impact situations was verified and extensive component tests were carried out at the brand's Advanced Vehicle Safety Technology Center in Sindelfingen. But of course, it's active safety systems that get the headlines here. As you expect, every EQS is festooned with radars and cameras. Uh, specifically, there are multi-mode radars at the front and rear, plus the front also gets a long-range radar and a stereo multi-purpose camera. Uh, for close-range sensing, there are 12 ultrasonic sensors and four 360-degree cameras. All of this allows this model to showcase the entire contents of Mercedes' driving assistance package. That's a pricey extra lower down the range. You'll find the main camera features grouped in the center screen's settings menu in three categories. The main items lie in avoid contact, which has active brake assist autonomous braking that incorporates a cross traffic function and that detects pedestrians and vehicles which are cutting across your path when you're making a turn. Avoid contact also includes ESP stability control, active lane keep assist and active blind spot assist. Uh, the latter two features use subtle steering assistance to correct the car when required. The active blind spot assist cameras also allow for an exit warning function and that warns passengers if they're just about to open their doors in front of an oncoming pedestrian, cyclist or vehicle. If your EQS has the interior assist feature fitted, an exit warning danger signal can even be given if the driver or the front passenger merely moves a hand towards the door handle. Two other categories lie in the settings menu. There's driving, which has active distance assist Distronic, active steering assist, and active lane change assist. And finally, there's the assistance category. Now this has traffic sign assist, which not only projects signs onto the dash, but can warn you if you're running a stoplight, and also attention assist, which monitors you for drowsiness. Plus there's traffic light view. Now that helpfully projects changing traffic light signals onto the screen uh, when you're stopped right under a traffic light and uh, you would otherwise uh, have to crane your neck up to see it. Other driving assistance package features include active emergency stop assist. Now this initiates immediate emergency braking if evasion is impossible. Plus, there's also an active evasive steering assist feature. Now, this can support you in making evasive maneuvers if a vehicle, a pedestrian or a cyclist suddenly appears in your path. 
If you've avoided base trim with your EQS, your car will be upgraded to the brand's Driving Assistance Plus package, uh, which means it'll also come with uh, two more features. One is pre-safe impulse side, which uses inflatable bolsters inside the seats to put more space between those inside the car and anything that might be just about to smash into it from the side. The other additional Driving Assistant Plus package feature is Active Stop and Go Assist, which takes the strain out of highway travel, anticipating tailbacks, and then, upon reaching them, uh, stopping the car before, when possible, starting it off again, all without driver input. Whatever kind of EQS you've chosen, all the more basic safety stuff will, of course, be provided as well. So there's an active bonnet to better protect pedestrians in an impact, and there's crosswind assist, too, to help on blowy days, along with tyre pressure monitoring, of course, and all the usual uh, electronic aids for traction and braking. As you'd expect, all the usual airbags are in place at the front and along the flanks of the interior, including large window bags which uh, cover the side windows like a curtain. There's also a driver's knee bag and there's a front centre bag which, in a severe side impact, positions itself between the driver and the front passenger, uh, reducing the risk of the occupant's heads making contact with each other. When the optional rear luxury lounge package is fitted, uh, then rear side airbags can fit it too. Finally, let's talk about autonomous driving. Now, Mercedes reckons it leads the field here, but it's difficult to know exactly which manufacturer it does these days uh, because legislation in the UK doesn't yet recognise uh, the so-called Level 3 autonomous drive systems, which enable the car to be set to drive itself completely independently for short periods while you turn your attention to other things. Uh, like the seventh generation S-Class, this EQS has been engineered for that and uh, using the optional drive pilot setup, which is available in this model's home market, it can do so on certain specially designated sections of German highway, although only at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour. Frustrated by the legislative limitations in offering this technology in other countries, Mercedes has done its best to make sure that this car does have the best level two autonomous system. And you could argue that the active distance assist Distronic system uh, that we mentioned earlier on uh, does fit that description. It's designed to operate on a dual carriageway and it works uh, with that active steering assist setup and that keeps you in the uh, centre of your designated lane and it will, if needed, apply some subtle steering correction to ease you back to where you ought to be. Uh, the Distronic feature, well, that is basically a super advanced adaptive cruise control which automatically regulates your distance to the car in front and can, if necessary, uh, remotely slow the car with up to 50% of stopping power. It also works the active speed limit assist feature that automatically sets the cruise control to speed limit signs as you pass them. With the size of battery in use here, it has 107.8 kilowatt hours of usable energy. Uh, driving range ought to be good. And as we told you in our driving experience section, it is uh, aided by the super slippery 0.20 CD drag coefficient in EQS 450 plus form. This Mercedes is WLTP rated at 453 miles from a full charge, which meant uh, the launch of this car at last, a European brand model was able to trump Tesla in terms of driving range. Uh, to be frank though, we don't expect that state of affairs to continue for very long. Uh, already the latest version of the Tesla Model S with a 100 kilowatt hour battery offers 405 miles of range. And that's easy enough to surpass the distance that you can travel uh, between charges with the uh, alternative Formatic Plus version of this EQS. Uh, that's the top Mercedes AMG EQS 53 Formatic Plus model that offers 358 miles of range. 
Mercedes, though, says it isn't really targeting Tesla here, or indeed what it sees as lesser top luxury EVs like the Audi e-tron GT with 298 miles, or the Porsche Taycan with 268 miles in rear-driven form, and the BMW iX with 380 miles. Instead, the brand has in mind a rather higher tier of luxury EVs in this segment. Its problem, though, is that a number of these have even larger batteries than this EQS and therefore even longer driving range figures. Uh, the Lucid Air, for example, has a battery of up to 118 kilowatt hours and goes up to 520 miles between charges. And the Neo ET7 uh, has a mammoth 150 kilowatt hour battery and is supposed to reach the magical 1,000 kilometer figure, that's 621 miles between charges. Of the rivals that Mercedes has in mind, only BMW's i7 can easily be trumped by a standard EQS. Uh, the i7 has a 101.7 kilowatt hour usable capacity battery, which gives 388 miles. Still, ultimate range may not matter too much if charging can be completed quickly. Here again, though, uh, the figures look fine, but they will need considerably uh, updating in the long term. That's because the EQS, a bit surprisingly, hasn't adopted the 800 volt electronic architecture that top Audi, Porsche and Genesis EVs use to charge it up to 350 kilowatts. Instead, there's the older tech 400 volt system, which offers up to 200 kilowatt DC rapid charging capability. Uh, still, as we said earlier at the current time, when charges capable of working at up to 350 kilowatts are rarer than unicorns, the EQS QS stats look just fine. Um, a 10 to 80% charge in both versions of this car will take only 32 minutes. And Mercedes claims that up to 186 miles of range can be added in as little as a quarter of an hour with this EQS 450 Plus model. As standard, you get an 11 kilowatt AC onboard charger, although a feature option will allow customers to pay extra for a more powerful 22 kilowatt unit. Uh, using an AC charging point, the 11 kilowatt onboard charger tops up the car from 10 to 100% in 10 hours. If you use the 7.4 kilowatt wall box, you'll be looking at 17 hours and 15 minutes for a complete recharge. So full replenishment will take a couple of nights of sleep then. And of course, there's a pre-entry climate control system so you can pre-warm or pre-cool the cabin before you reach it. And that's while the car is still connected up. So you don't have to use energy uh, for the ventilation fan once you're underway. If you're out and about and you're having to wait at a public charger, uh, then the center screen's apps menu even provides a selection of games that you can play to while away the time while you're connected up. When you're on the road in your EQS, you'll find it useful that the GPS mapping screen shows charging stations along your route with live information about the rate, uh, how many charging points there are, and how many of those charging points are available to use. Uh, if you are using the navigation system to reach your chosen charging point, uh, then the battery will be preheated or pre-cooled as you drive to that location uh, for the most efficient charging visit possible. Mercedes claims to offer the world's biggest charging network with those in the Mercedes Me network offset with green power. At the time of this film, there were over 500,000 AC and DC charging points available to EQS owners across 31 countries, 200,000 of those in Europe, uh, but that is in Europe, of course. Charging station access is either via the Mercedes Me app or an RFID card that you'll be issued with or uh, a Mercedes EQ vehicle head unit. And there's a year's free use of Ionity Unlimited Rapid Charging. You might want to buy into a fixed price tariff to cover charging use. Uh, we'll quote prices for that, current at the time of this test in summer 2022. Uh, Mercedes offers three fixed price tariff options. Tariff S is free of charge and it's for use by what the brand calls uh, casual drivers, so people who don't have a very high mileage. Uh, tariff M is for regular drivers and costs £4.90 a month. And Tariff L is for frequent drivers and is free for the first year and then £16.20 per month thereafter. 
All of this car's charging functions are customizable via the Mercedes Me app or by using the charging section of this car's center screen EQ menu. Either way, you'll be able to customize the kind of charging that you want to do and decide when you want to do it, uh, perhaps to take advantage of lower off-peak electricity tariff rates. Now, we particularly like the center screen EQ section's clever choice of different charging programs. Uh, there's standard, there's home, and there's work. Now, each of these allow you to preset things like uh, departure time, maximum charge level, and air conditioning settings. If you don't have a home charging wall box, obviously you'll need to get one of those fitted. At the time of this test, uh, Mercedes was offering a choice of two, a BP Pulse unit costing £999, or a Pod Point unit costing £875. Both these costs include installation, and at the time of this test, purchasers were entitled to a £350 government OLEZ EVHS grant towards the cost of that. We mentioned the charging section of the EQ menu. Uh, here you'll also find a feature called Eco Charging, which drops your maximum charging rate from its peak of 200 kilowatts down to 100 kilowatts, uh, while also maximizing your state of charge at around 80% every time you plug in. Uh, both of these measures, if used frequently, will considerably prolong the life of the battery. Uh, there are three other parts to the EQ screen there's a route section which uses the electric intelligence of the navigation system based on topography, temperature, traffic and charging station provision along your intended journey which can then be easily planned around key charging points. Uh, there's also a range menu which shows you what your current range is and what you can do to maximize it. For example, adjusting climate controls or turning on eco driving functions or eco driving modes. And finally, there's a consumption screen with graphical displays uh, where you can keep an eye on how efficiently you've been driving over various periods of time. Beyond the EQ screens, there are other efficiency tools for you to use as well. The center screen's info section has an energy monitor, so you can keep an eye on at any given time what's being powered by what. And both the instrument screen and the head-up display have an eco display to help you to drive more economically. And on the instrument screen, there's also an energy consumption readout and a range display too, which hopefully shows your current minimum, maximum, and current driving range figures. In driving efficiency, it'll help enormously if you make proactive use of the car's clever energy recuperation system. Now this is manually selectable by these steering wheel paddles here in three manual stages, uh, D+, D and D minus, or through a set and forget D auto setting if you can't decide. Our energy consumption figure on this test has been around three miles per kilowatt hour, which in real world well to wheel charging terms based on the energy cost of drawing from the national grid means a CO2 equivalent of 29.3 grams per kilometer. EVs like this may be environmentally friendly, but they're very far from being completely green. Maintenance visits will be once a year or every 15,000 miles, whichever comes first. A fixed price servicing is available across the EQS range, and most customers opt for the Mercedes Service Care Plan, uh, based either on a two-year, uh, two-service deal, uh, three years with three services, or four years with four services. Whatever package you opt for, it'll cover the cost of all recommended service items like brake fluid, uh, air filters, and screen wash. Uh, brake pads too, although you'll hardly ever have to replace those in an EQS thanks to the brake regeneration system. It's also worth mentioning that the standard Mercedes Me Connect services package includes remote self-diagnostic capability and that enables your EQS to monitor wear and tear items and alert your local dealer to let you know if something needs seeing to. Uh, you get a message both on the dashboard and via your Mercedes Me app reminding you when a service is due. Like all its rivals, uh, the EQS falls into top insurance group 50 in all its forms. And again, like all other EVs, the EQS is, for the time being, zero rated for VED road tax. And at the time of this test in summer 2022, attracted a benefiting kind company car tax rating of just 2%. That's valid at least until April 2024. 
At the time of this test, that meant an annual BIK tax bill of £817 a year for a 40% taxpayer. Company drivers benefit from 100% uh, first year capital allowances too, and this car's zero emission status also sees it escape the London congestion charge until 2025. As for residual values, well, Mercedes Benz Financial Services is quoting a 44% residual figure over four years for the EQS, uh, which isn't great in a market currently valuing a Tesla Model S at closer to 70% over the same period. But depreciation on EVs is a fluid thing uh, and the market is evolving quickly. The warranty is the usual three-year uh, unlimited mileage package that you'll get with all Mercedes models. Uh, that's the same as a BMW iX. Uh, Tesla gives a longer four-year warranty, but they set a low 50,000 mile uh, limit to go with it. You can extend the warranty on your EQS to five years at extra cost, and that's up to 30 years warranty against perforation due to corrosion. Uh, the brand also offers pan-European Mercedes-Benz roadside assistance, which is free for the first three years and thereafter automatically renewed for 12 months every time the car undergoes a full Mercedes recommended service until the car is 30 years old. The EQS's batteries are separately warranted for eight years or 100,000 miles. What else? Well, if you're interested in green issues, uh, you'll want to know that Mercedes has kept the cobalt content of this car's batteries to just 10% and that 80% of the steel that's used in construction comes from scrap. Uh, you might also want to know that this cabin's floor coverings are fashioned from uh, a yarn that's made of regenerated nylon. Uh, one tonne of this yarn saves over 6.5 tonnes of CO2 compared to virgin material. It may also be of interest that this model is produced at one of the world's cleanest production plants. Uh, that's the so-called Factory 56 complex at the Mercedes Sindelfingen factory. Uh, the roof of Factory 56 is 40% grassed and it's equipped with 12,000 photovoltaic modules which generate um, from solar rays 30% of the energy needed to run the plant. As for the thorny issue of battery recycling, well, uh, after the life of the car has come to an end, Mercedes-Benz Energy, uh, that's a division of the brand, will be able to use the battery from a scrapped EQS in stationary energy storage systems connected to the national grid. And that's all good to know. Inevitably, the EV concept is a hard sell to the boardroom buyer, not because of the usual necessary price premium. In this exalted part of the market, uh, there basically isn't one. This EQS costs much the same as an equivalent conventional S-Class or at least a conventional PHEV one. Other common EV characteristics, though, are less noticeable at this level the refinement and the instant acceleration, for instance, that so impressed customers of smaller EVs will simply be expected by those who are used to big capacity combustion models in the super luxury saloon segment. These people don't need a full battery model to salve their environmental consciences or to impress their shareholders. There are long ranging plug-in hybrids in this class that deliver that without the limiting range of a full EV between charges. In an EQS though, those mileage limitations may well be much less onerous than customers in this segment might suppose. If you can make the range of this car work, then it really does deliver a next generation take on what a luxury limousine should be. As long as you've paid extra for the futuristic hyperscreen, the cabin of this car, well, it feels like something out of Marvel Studios. That won't please the traditionalists who will continue to be satisfied by an equivalent S-Class, but it might well attract the younger, the more zeitgeist conscious top executives that Mercedes needs for future sales in this segment. And some of the technology that the EQS carries over from the S-Class is genuinely segment leading, like the digital light headlamps that we can have now and the drive pilot and intelligent park pilot systems uh, already prepared for use as soon as legislation will allow it. As with the S-Class though, uh, we're not completely convinced by all aspects of the interior quality given the lottery level sums being required here for ownership. 
plus the hyperscreen, that really should be standard. Nor are we certain that absolutely all the uh, technological features are genuinely useful. Fingerprint scanners and fiddly interior gesture systems, well, we could live without those. So this is a work in progress, but it's undeniably a milestone in EV evolution and the kind of signpost to the future that large Mercedes models have always been. It's also one of the most important models that this brand has ever made. Its first EV fundamentally engineered to be electric. Much more in this line, of course, will shortly follow. But this, for Mercedes-Benz, is really where the future starts. Tomorrow's world today, beginning right here. <laughs>